Here is a twisted story of a historical woman. Before you judge, the end of the story might surprise you. On February 29, 1736, a baby girl was born to parents in Manchester, England. She was born to a poor family and had many challenges as a youth. Her parents were very religious and had her baptized at age six. At age 16, she was inspired by a man named James to join a sect marked with religious fanaticism. She was forced to marry soon after and had four children, all of whom died in childhood. She had extreme and fanatical ideas about sex and believed celibacy and abandonment of marriage was a sign of high moral perfection. She preached that pursuing perfection is life and was the only way to achieve heaven. She rose to power when she began to preach about the imminent second coming of Jesus and that sin should be attacked more boldly for sinless perfection to be achieved. She claimed publicly that she received visions from God that celibacy and confession of every sin was a true road to salvation. Many of her followers verified her by pointing to a time when she supernaturally spent four hours speaking in 72 languages. The person I speak of is none other than Anne Lee. She was also known as Mother Anne and was a founder of the cultic group known as the Shakers. Like shake a light, come like eternal, shake, shake out of me all that is carnal. Come like shake a light, come like eternal, shake, shake out of me all that is carnal. I'll take nimble steps, I'll be a David. I'll... Uh, celibacy, which is so often misunderstood, is not really a negative thing, but on the contrary, very positive, because it's uh, the full embracing of the new family unit which Mother Anne herself brought into being. If you assumed the previous previous discourse was regarding Ellen White, you are incorrect. Though one cannot avoid some of the glaring similarities between the two spiritual leaders. Though there are indeed many differences, the nature of the rise of prominence of the two prophetesses are undeniably comparable. There are many ways that Anne Lee and Ellen White are similar. In this video, I will point out the similarities between Anne Lee and Ellen White. Let's begin with number one. Like Anne Lee, Ellen White was a product of the Great Awakening. Anne Lee came out of the first, Ellen White came out of the second. Both had very religious parents, whose fanaticism undoubtedly inspired your daughter's future heresies. Three, both were inspired by a James. For Anne Lee, her James was James Wardley, the co-founder of an English sect, along with his wife, Jane Wardley. This sect and its teaching would be the precursors of what we now call the Shakers. Ellen White's James became her husband and the real founder of the SD faith. Now why do I say that? Adventism is what it is today and it rose to the heights it is today because of the business savvy of James White and his eye for a good product, i.e. the writings of Ellen White. Four. Both women began their ministry with the teachings of the imminent return of Jesus and the importance of sinless perfection. In Review and Herald on September 25, 1900, Ellen White says to be redeemed means to cease from sin. In her writing, The Faith I Live By on page 44, she says, as a son of man was perfect in his life, so his followers are to be perfect in theirs. In all the redeemed host, not one defect will be seen. In Testimonies, Volume 2, page 505, she says, Conversion is not completed until he attains to perfection of Christian character. In Acts of the Apostles, page 531, she says, Human beings may in this life attain to perfection of character. Ellen White also believed in the imminent return of Christ and preached extensively that Christ would return in her generation. In early writings, page 64, she says, Get ready, get ready, get ready. You will have to die a greater death to the world than ye have ever yet died. Saw that there was a great work to do for them, but little time to which to do it. She would later double down and say Christ's imminent return was canceled because Christians were not doing their job. Number five, like Anne's bizarre episode with speaking in tongues for 72 hours, 
Ellen White supporters point to her holding a heavy Bible for a long length of time as a supernatural vindication that she is a true prophetess. Number six, although not explicitly stated in her writings, Ellen White's lifestyle certainly indicated those of the modern feminist, much like Anne Lee. Instead of the biblical calling of building her home in godliness, Ellen White will leave her children for an extensive amount of time to teach, preach, write, and sell books. Number seven, much like Anne Lee, Ellen's two of her four children also died young. One of them died at two months, another at 16 years old. Now, it is important to note that children's death at that time was not uncommon, but the similarity is still uncanny. Number eight, Mother Anne claimed to be the actual second coming of Jesus, and she believed that she was Jesus returned in female form. While not as extreme, Ellen White did claim spiritual superiority in her writings, claiming that they were direct utterings of God Almighty and that her writings were the actual fulfillment of the spirit of prophecy mentioned in Revelation 19 and verse 10. Number nine and final. Finally, they both claimed to have visions from God that confirmed their religious positions. Anne Lee is a fanatical 18th century prophetess whose delusional ideologies were capitalized upon for public fame and gain. Her religious ideologies matched her time, as many people in the First Great Awakening would also claim to have visions and prophetic proclamation. Large groups like the Methodists came from this era that influenced Anne. Her popularity persists even today in the people known as the Shakers. Ellen White came from the Second Great Awakening that saw the birth of groups like the Mormon and Jehovah's Witnesses. Heavily influenced by the fanaticism of her time, it is not a surprise that she would also exhibit signs of a visionary prophet. With this in mind and this context to consider, it changes the spiritual uniqueness that many may attribute to SDAs and to Ellen White, because history actually shows she was just another Annie. The pot and the kettle. Thank you guys for watching this video and don't forget if you like this content go ahead and give our video a thumbs up we hope that you were blessed and our goal is to spread the truth of the gospel to anyone who would listen we ask you guys to come back next monday for a new video where we continue on our series by exposing the, the doctrines of ellen white thank you guys once more and as we also always say on our channel have fun have faith and be free bye guys and have a great one